I always talk about, you know, uh, people waste energy by complaining. People are wasting energy. I watch some of these uh, uh, coaches and they're screaming at the ref and just yelling and screaming. And I'm thinking, wow, the good news is I was trying to find something positive. Good news is that person has a lot of passion and they really care. They're just channeling it in a different direction. Mm. And if you can somehow get across them, how important, what if you channel that towards your players? Most of us never learned how to train our brains, which is why most of us needlessly settle, struggle, and worse, suffer. My name is Chris Doris, and I want to make brain training mainstream. This is my series, Tough Talks, Conversations on Mental Toughness. I'm interviewing badasses from all walks of life on what mental toughness means to them and their unique approaches to strengthening their minds. Hey everyone, welcome back to Tough Talks, Conversations on Mental Toughness. I'm your host, Chris Doris. And before we get to our guest today, our one housekeeping item, as per usual, is if you are not getting the daily dose, mental toughness tips in 30 seconds or less, delivered to your email inbox 365 days a year at about 6 a.m., wherever you are on the planet, then let's fix that because it's good. It's goodness, right? It's mental toughness gold. It's easily, quickly consumable, practical reminders and, and invitations or challenges or, uh, you know, the disciplines or practices for you to get your head right first thing in the day, maximize the probability of going off and creating excellence in that day. So you just go to ChristopherDoris.com backslash lists, L-I-S-T-S. That's actually if you want to get on both the daily dose as well as the notifications for new podcast episodes and my Tuesday blogs. If you just want the daily dose, then it's ChristopherDoris.com backslash DD for daily dose. Okay. Uh, This next guest is very dear to me. I have known Coach Linda Volstead since about, hmm, it's late 90s, like 96 or 1997, when I started working as the mental toughness coach for the men's golf team at Arizona State University. And uh, just talk, what, what a dynasty. <laughs> and um, so, you know, Linda was the coach then and uh, was just killing it. Y- you know, you can find, there are plenty of bios online for Coach Linda Volstead. And I'm not going to read any of them. They're long. They're really, they, they, then they should be. But I'm going to take out, I have extracted from them a few nights that I'll share with you. She coached from 1980 to 2001, so 21 years. She is an eight time national coach of the year. She won nine conference championships, and six national titles. Six. I think that's more than twice, two times more than any other team has ever won in women's golf. She is the most successful sports coach in Arizona State University history. She is the Pac-12 coach of the, is the Pac-12 conference coach of the, Century, you heard it. <laughs> and she coached the only undefeated team in NCAA uh, golf history, I believe, in 1995. We'll have to ask her about that. I think she'll sh- enjoy sharing that story. You know, one of my favorite memories of, of Linda is our lunch, which I will most definitely be bringing up. She and I would share these great lunches at Arizona State University Karsten Golf Course in the clubhouse, and we would just go off, go off. Like, I'm sure we're about to. <laughs> That's all we've ever, it's all we ever do. It's like, she's deep and she's, she cares. You know, she's obviously this phenomenal legend of a, of a golf coach. And she's much more than that because she's, she's a, she's a leader of humans. You know, and that's what attracted me instantly to her and why I've stayed in such close touch with her. She's actually influenced my work profoundly. If any of you, if you're watching this and you've worked with me, she's she's changed you through me. If we've ever done a post-game routine, that's entirely hers. That's all her. That's all her. Right? And uh, I'll, I'll create an opportunity to share that with her. 
Okay. Well, that's enough. Let's get let's go find her. She's waiting for us. Where are you at, coach? Who's winning right now? Who's winning? This guy. This guy. Because so I'm gonna use an analogy here, coach. This is how happy I am to be able to share you with my Tough Talks tribe. Have you ever had the experience where you're going to a birthday party as a guest and you know, you know you have the coolest gift to give? <laughs> yeah, that's what I got right yes. now. Knowing, yeah. Knowing that you're my gift to the tribe. I appreciate that very much. Look forward to it. Yeah, I'm so happy to have you here. We, I love our history. Yes. You've got to forgive me, by the way. If I'm a little winded, I just got finished reading your bio and it only took 90 minutes. <laughs> Do you know that you have a Wikipedia page? I some my, my niece told me, Aunt Linda, you have a Wikipedia page. Yeah, uh, you yeah. know, like that's the metric. I yeah. mean, you have arrived. Okay, well, I did not know that, but leave it to the young kids. They'll, yeah. they'll... yeah. So you know, we we're, we're not going to belabor this because we're going to get we're going to you know what this is going to be like for us. Remember our lunches at Karsten? Yes. You know, those are some of my best memories of you. And some of my best memories. It's just I loved our life because our conversations transcended the sport, you mm -hmm. know, and, and that's something I've always truly loved about you. One of many things, which is you see beyond the thing. Yes. Into the bigger realms. And you've always been interested in what's more important, what's purposeful. Mm -hmm. Right. And we're going to get to a couple of cool, super cool things, ways that you've changed my life and therefore changed many, many lives through what I've learned from you. And we'll get to that. But since the whole thing is a podcast called Tough Talks, Conversations on Mental Toughness, you probably know a thing or two about mental toughness. So I would love to hear from you. And that's why, you know, one of the fun things for me about doing this podcast is invite people from different walks of life, superstars like you, to have people, they hear enough of my stuff, the people that follow my work. Like, they, want to, they want to hear other people's impressions of uh, of like what mental toughness means. So that's my first question for you. What does mental toughness even mean to you? Well, being able to uh, perform in the highest moment, mm. being able to uh, be your best when you need to be your best. I mean, everybody wants to be their best, but when the, the gun goes off and it's your turn, are you really going to be prepared? So I think preparing for the magical moment I, I do a little talk on preparing for the magical moment. Mm. And I mm. think um, if you'd like me right now, I can tell you what that is, preparing for the magical moment. One yes, please. <laughs> because I work a lot with, with coaches and I work a lot with athletes. And I say, you know, you need to be prepared for that magical moment. And then I ask them, you know, you, you've had magical moments. What are they? And then they'll talk about them. And then I said, I, I bet there's been some magical moments that, that passed you by mm. and they go, well, yeah, there was one time if I just made the putt of the last hole, I would have won the tournament. Oh, okay. So, so we kind of talk about that, but for me, preparing for the magical moment is doing all the things that you're supposed to do. Good nutrition, making sure you're caught up on your homework, making sure you have good relationships, making sure that you've been exercising, doing all the things in preparation for whatever your event is or whatever your life has to bring you. And then if you're prepared for it, it can it can happen. But if you're not prepared, it won't. So if I had some players who decided they wanted to go out on Thursday night and party a little bit, Thursday night party, and then Friday we had a tournament and they weren't prepared, we had to talk about that. Mm. So I would say prepare for that magical moment because if you're not prepared, it's going to pass you by. And I'll give you an example. Yeah, okay, one, great. One of my players got invited to the Dinah Shore. Now, the Dinah Shore at the time, many years ago, but it was equivalent to the Masters. It was a big tournament. It was sponsored by Nabisco. And she was at the tournament. Her parents going to be there till the weekend. So I was there following her. And she was just, she was in that magical space. She was in the zone. She was like one or two under and uh, just playing beautifully. And comes the last three holes and she starts making bogeys. Now, this is a mentally tough gal. So I knew it wasn't not being prepared for mental, tough, mental toughness. And afterwards, I said, um, said, what did you have to eat today? Mm. And because that's part of it. That's you part of it. You got to drink your water. You got to have your snacks. And she goes, oh, coach, Nabisco had the most incredible tent. You go <laughs> in there and it has everything. It oh, had milkshake, no. dough, 
own it. And I'm listening, I'm listening to this. And she just, she got tapped out, you know? And so I used an example of, she wasn't prepared for that magical moment because it really could have been a magical moment. So for me, mental toughness is just being prepared and paying attention and making sure that you are prepared for being in the zone, for having that magic happen. And it's going to happen. You just have to be prepared for it. So a lot of things, a lot of my principles all lead into that. Oh, it's beautiful. You are one of the greatest leaders I've ever known. And I've known, I have known a lot of great leaders. I'm very blessed in that regard. And you're way high on the list of the best leaders I've ever met that have influenced me. And that I've watched influence people. So what would you say? There's a lot of leaders that follow this podcast. So what would you say are I don't know, one or two of the most important attributes of a phenomenal leader? Well, Chris, that's a very uh, involved question. Okay. Well, I mean, can, can I go through what my three principles are? See, look at you. <laughs> yes, please. And by the way, you don't need permission for any of this wisdom sharing. Please, thank you. <laughs> I thought about it ahead of time. And I thought, I know what he's going to ask me, but I just want to be prepared. Like I said, I want to prepare. No, you were texting yesterday. And I told you, you of all, you do not need to prepare, but yes, please. please. Well, because I can go off on tangents and, I, and I'm and thinking. The tangents so are we, great too. Everywhere we go is going to be nice, but yes, please. Tell me those three. Okay. So I operate off of three principles. The first principle is everything base, is based on energy. So there's mm -hmm. energy fields out there and we all have a vibrational energy. We have that electromagnetic energy frequency that surrounds us and not to go into great detail, but energy fields are extremely important. And so your energy field is extremely important. And, and knowing, knowing that we have this energy about us, we need to be able to tap into that, that energy. So the second principle is the law of attraction. Now, everybody's heard about the law of attraction. Maybe if you haven't, basically law of attraction is what you think about, you bring about. And so what you think about and the words you use are extremely important. So with the law of attraction, it's very similar to, okay, the law of gravity. Mm. The law of gravity, if I drop something, it's going to follow the ground. And there's no question about it. Nobody questions that law. You may not be able to explain it. The law of attraction, it's the same thing. It's a law. It's a principle. It's, it's out there working whether you understand it or not. So I thought I better have a good understanding of what this law of attraction is. Mm -hmm. So I realized that the things that the players were saying, the things that people say are important because you're going to attract that to you. And uh, so that's where I know you talk a lot about manifesting. And that's where manifesting comes from. When you are manifesting something, you're, you want to attract it to you. So I always use an example of would you like a new car? Oh, yeah, I'd like a new car. What kind of car do you want? Oh, I'd love a Genesis. That's just such a sweet car. Well, what color would you like? Oh, cobalt blue. It's just so beautiful. What would you like inside of it? Well, I hear they have heated seats and they have air conditioned seats too. So I get them talking about this car. This, And so now they're manifesting this beautiful Genesis. And this is the example I use because people can relate to this. So now they're at a stoplight. And all of a sudden, there's this Genesis right in front of them. They stop at a service station. There's a Genesis right next to them. Yeah. And so there's this thing called the reticular activating system that, that filters through all the other cars and focuses on that one car that you're looking for. And so that's just an example that you can use. And so we talk about vision boards. And the reason why you do vision boards is because you want those things that, that are really important to you right out in front of you. Because you can attract to it. So there's this electromagnetic field out there that we give signals out to. We're giving signals and receiving signals every single day to this universal energy that's out there. Mm -hmm. So you might as well use that to your advantage. The third principle, and the most important and my favorite, mm -hmm. is love. To surround your world with love. So everything that you do, do it with love in your heart. And so those are the three principles. Now, you talk about leaders. Mm. Leaders need to have great vibrational energy. They need to understand how important that is because what they're thinking about and what they're giving out is radiating within the room. So 
I'm sure you've talked about heart math. I'm sure you've talked about the Institute of Noetic Science. And those of you that are listening, Google those, look up those sites because you can find all kinds of amazing things there. So the heart math, they, they actually were able to measure the electromagnetic fields that we have. And when you are radiating love, you have a higher frequency. So you have a better chance of attracting all those things to you that you want or that are, that are important to you. If you are working with a group of people, or in my instance, when I was coaching, I know that that magnetic energy spreads out about three feet. So if I'm standing next to a player and they're struggling a little bit, I need to make sure that I'm very centered and that I have mm -hmm. great thoughts going through my mind because I know that they're going to pick up that vibe. So the research that's done is you can pick up the vibes of people that you're that you're next to. So a great leader is going to want to have those attributes. They're going to have they need to have a thorough understanding of that. And I know you probably talked about energy vampires, but mm. you have a leader who's in a bad space or a bad mood. They are giving out bad, bad vibes. You might. What's the difference between good vibes and bad vibes? Well, you shouldn't even have to ask that question because we've right. all experienced it. Someone walks in the room and they have negative energy and they're always complaining. You don't want to be around that person. But someone walks in the room and they're happy and joyful and grateful. You can't wait to get around them. And the reason is because of that vibrational energy that we're giving off and that other people are receiving and we can receive and that we can give. I just want to let people know that we did not have any conversation about what we were going to discuss prior to this except the conversations we've always had. Correct. And in contemplating what to wear today, me, for this conversation, I I was vacillating between two things, <clears throat> some ASU gear or what I ultimately chose. Did you, did you have, have you seen what's on my hoodie here yet today? Well, I have not seen it. So you're going to have to stand up a little bit so I can see what it says. That's Oh, <laughs> beautiful. See, you're on the same frequency. Vibes, you're on the same, same frequency. Is that you, you understand that's what it's all about? I mean, the vibes, the vibrations and all that. I mean, people need to understand this because it's so important. It can it can uh, do great things for you and, and lead you in great directions. And the people that you surround yourself with, it's really important because they're giving off that vibe. Yeah. Amen to that. Uh, this has become a huge, huge element of my work. In fact, you're reminding me one of uh, a former guest on the podcast is name. He's the former CEO. He just resigned recently to become the, um, the chairman of the board of the WD40 company. His name is Gary Ridge. You'd love this guy. He's an Aussie dude and he studies tribal cultures and he talks about what? Right. And he's, and he, he, he has this guy. This is a doll. This is a <laughs> type A leader. And on the back, you can't really read it, but it's the soul-sucking CEO, right? And this is the guy who you don't want to be. This is this is the leader you don't want to be, the, like the energy you call the energy vampire. Do you recognize an, another former Top Talks guest, my former business partner from Head Games? Now we're going way back. This is when we met. My partner at Head Games, who's a mentor of mine, Dr. Allison Arnold. Mm-hmm. Oh, you remember Doc Alley? I remember Doc Alley. Sure. She was, she was trip. She was like us. She's ahead of our time. Yeah. Right on. Yeah. So Doc Alley has taught me a billion things. And one of them is that we're always either polluting or purifying the environment with our vibes. Mm -hmm. and, and we, and, and, and I just had a, a, the guest, I believe that was right before you. His name is Guru Ganesh Khalsa, Guru Ganesh Khalsa. And he was also talking about vibes and he was talking about mechanisms that, that, that measure our vibes. Right. So we got a we got a theme going on here. So, yeah. so you, what a great, what a phenomenal answer to the question. What are a few of the most important attributes of a phenomenal leader? And your answers are energy vibes, understanding and applying the law of attraction and teaching it, and and love. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. It is amazing because it's surround yourself with love, you know, and, and the more I the more I would read about this and the more uh, 
I learned about it. And of course, I went into all the scientific things and with Dr. Debbie Cruz. Uh, she that form another form of tough talks. Yeah. I mean, she 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 does she wants the research. Yeah. You know, she'd always say to me, but coach, I need the research. And I said, Well, look at all the trophies. Is that is that enough? <laughs> she goes, No, it's not enough. <laughs> she goes, she goes, I I need to I need to hook you up or I need to hook other people up, you know, so she can she can get those brain waves and and find out what's going inside inside your mind. So you you learn all those things, and then you apply it. And the, the fun thing for me, it took 10 years to to kind of get to the point where I understood the principles, but I hadn't really applied them. Mm. And and with, with golf, it was very challenging, Chris, because, as you know, it's an individual sport. Yeah. And I needed to figure out how to get them to play as a team because I knew if they played as a team, they would play a lot better. Yeah, you know, it's interesting that uh, I, I think a lot of people would hear your response to what are some, you know, the most important attributes of a phenomenal leader. And you're talking about energy and law of attraction and love. I think a lot of particularly old school people would hear this as fluff. Mm -hmm. you know, like woo woo. Mm -hmm. let's, let's go get the crystals and burn the incense and woo soft. <laughs> it's dropping in for me is, you know, kind of, well, what they call soft. Mm -hmm. You have never been even remotely apologetic about this, any of this. You know, uh, in my experience, and I love that because this is this is real. Well, I people would ask me, you know, how how, how did you do what you did, and I start trying and explain it, and I realized that they they just thought I had ten ears, so I had to dumb it down a little bit and and come up with other things. Now, I'm so convinced of all these things, and people are aware. Of, people are hearing about the law of attraction. People are hearing about grateful. Write a, have a grateful journal. And but they don't may maybe understand why. So when you look at the electromagnetic field that we have, when you're being grateful and you're talking about love and joy and happiness, it raises the vibrational energy that you have, makes it a higher energy. And so it's easier for you to play your best or be your best in that state. And so when I would say to people, I mean, I remember I started working with this coach. She was actually at Drake. She's now the women's basketball coach at University of Oklahoma. When we first started working, because the uh, the athletic director of Sandy Hatfield Club, good friend of mine, she had me come in to talk to the coaches. And she said, I specifically want you to talk to the women's basketball coach. So we sat down and I could tell she really kind of went, let's get on with it. Because she had some recruit or something. And then she looked and said, well, what do you think I should do? And I said, well, we're going to cut to the chase then. And what makes you happy? Because I knew there was a problem there. I said, what makes you happy? And she sat. she couldn't think of anything. Oh, She couldn't think of anything. Because I knew that's the state of mind that she was in. So I said, you got three kids. Oh, yeah, I love my kids. So we started talking about that. And all of a sudden, her mood started to change. And I said, why don't you start a grateful journal? And she didn't quite understand it, but she was willing to do it. So we started working together. And then she would talk about, ah. Uh, at this basketball game and the, the ref that's there, I just hate him. He's this, he's that. So I said, okay, let's just change this, change the story, mm. change the story. Can you surround him with love? Oh, I don't think I can do that. I said, can you just get to, can you get to neutral and not have any thoughts at all about him? Yeah, I can do that. I said, okay, just do that. And when he walks in and you walk up to him, smile and say, hi, it's nice to see you. And then see if you can mean that. So hey, all of a sudden, this she, is powerful. This is really powerful stuff, Coach. So, so the refs there, and she previous to me, she had said, "Oh, he always calls bad calls," and then I start yelling at him, and and so I'm, we've always talked about how do you manage your energy because it's passing on to your players, and so that that particular day, she did what I asked her to do. That's the beauty of working with some people is they actually do what you ask them to do, and. She got done with the game and they won the game. And she goes, oh, my God, it was amazing. He didn't make any bad calls. I didn't have to yell at him. And I said, OK, so now you've learned how to manage your energy. Did she say what a waste of energy that was? So she started learning, learning these things and how to manage, how to manage her energy. Mm. And mm. once you give them an example on that and then have them try it, they they learn it and, and they use it. And she's. She did really well. They ended up winning their conference championship. I think she went undefeated. And she's now the women's basketball coach at the University of Oklahoma. 
Jenny Brownchuck is her name, and she's doing ter- incredible things. And we talk occasionally, but you know, you teach these principles, and then and they move on, and you and you hope that they're going to be able to use them. But once they use them, they get it. And she totally understood about the energy, and especially with the team and passing her energy on to the team. Huge. All right, so let's slow this down because this is a mic drop moment. This is a snapshot. This is what you and I did have a brief email exchange uh, in the beginning when I um, begged you to to be on <laughs> for holiday and, and and where was that? I know it's San Diego, but it's um, Crystal Pier. Crystal Pier in San hey. Diego on Pacific Beach. Beach. Yeah, that, that's just nice. That's, yeah, that's your magical house. place, Chris. Yeah, I you well, I can tell. Well, if you're there. It's magical. Because <laughs> the vibe, if you're if you're there wherever you are, the vibe's elevating, right? You know what you're <laughs> describing right now? <clears throat> what you've just been describing for me, the way I'm hearing it, is a massive distinction that I like to spend a lot of time on with people. And it's the difference between being a victim of circumstance versus a creator. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that is one of the most profound shifts ever. Yes. So I love this language. I'm stealing it. Please do. Thank and you. Pass it on. How to manage your energy. Yeah. I'm going to create something from that. How to manage your energy to shift from victim to creator. Yes. You want to hear a mantra I came up with after? I took a trip a few years ago. I went to a, uh, an event on longevity in um, Sardinia, Italy. Um, an event that was hosted by Mind Valley. It's called A-Fest which the A stands for awesomeness, perfectly named event. So after that beautiful four-day event, I was all the, all the way over there, uh, you know, in the Mediterranean, and I, I, I thought, I want to go do something cool after this. I don't want to just go for four days and then come home. I want to go somewhere. So I asked my mom, who's also named Linda, who is an intrepid world traveler and lived all over the planet, and I said, what should I do? And she just said, without without hesitation, she said, I'll tell you exactly what you're going to do. Did you ever tell you about her? This is her. This is the day we were reunited because I was adopted. Yeah, I love that. Love that story. Yeah, yeah. That's so, a story. That's, a, that's an <laughs> that's, amazing that's, story. Yeah, that's your joker story. So, so she said, I'll tell you exactly what you're going to do. You're going island hopping in the islands of Greece with no itinerary. Woo. <laughs> okay. I so said, this, uh, this is, pr- we didn't even need to do a DNA test right there. That's the proof that we're related. So that's what I did. So I went and, uh, and, I'll, and I'll abbreviate the hell out of the story because the story can be very, very long. I have a folder here that is entitled the Italy Greece Miracles. And there's a list of 48 isolated stories of magic that was co-created by, because of everything you're describing right now. Yeah. All I brought was yeah. any carry on. And a um and a huge vibe, yes. And co-created magic. Nothing. Everything was taken care of. I met people who took care of me. So after the trip was over, I, I was so mind blown that I came up with a mantra, and I think you're going to love it. Magic. It's all there is in this equation that we call life. The variable is my ability to slow down enough and vibe high enough. So that I can co-create with it. Absolutely. That's beautiful, Chris. I thought you would like that. Absolutely beautiful. Yes. Yeah. Because it's out there. The universe is out there. It'll 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 respond to us. We're sending signals every single day to the universe. And we're we're sending and we're receiving. And you got to pay attention. You know, I'm convinced. See, now I'm having fun. This is everybody, by the way, this is what our launches were like. Okay. Just so you know. This is why I loved having lunch <laughs> yeah. with Linda Valls. Yeah, I loved it too. It was, it was where, and we would get there so fast. Oh, we would order yeah. and then we'd go right in. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So great. Yeah. So, um, yeah, right. So like magic is all there is. So we either are participating with it or interfering or not. It's just either we're tapping in or we're not. Yeah. We're creating with or we're not. Mm-hmm. And do, do, would you say it's difficult to change, to manage your energy. Is that, is that hard to do? No, yeah. it's not. you just have to understand it. Yeah. You have to understand it and it has to mean something to you. Mm. And so managing it, you ha- it has to mean something to you and you have to understand why, why you're doing it and, and why you want to manage your energy. And, and um, I always talk about, you know, uh, people waste energy by complaining. 
people are wasting energy. I watch some of these uh, uh, coaches and they're screaming at the ref and just yelling and screaming. And I'm thinking, wow, the good news is, I always trying to find something positive. Good news is that person has a lot of passion and they really care. They're just channeling it in a different direction. Mm. And if you can somehow get across them, how important, what if you channel that towards your players? What if you channeled it in a different direction? Mm. And it can be difficult because some people are set in their ways and they're just not going to pay attention. But yeah. it's not hard. It, it really isn't difficult. You just have to find their why and their reason and have it mean something to them and then have them practice it. And when they practice it, it's just over. Practice, it's not, what do you got to lose there, right? Yeah, it's kind of like, oh, wow, that really worked. Give me some more. Give me some more of that. And that's the, those are the moments I wait for when I'm working with people, the awe moment. Yeah, 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 right. <laughs> yeah, there's enough, people get enough positive reinforcement from being mean to believe that that's mm -hmm. the effective approach. Mm -hmm. You know, so that mm -hmm. uh, in my experience, it's not uncommon for people to hear what we're describing again as like, oh, give me a break. Enough of this foo foo crap. It's like, okay, that's cool. Um, it works. Don't believe me. Don't believe me. Yeah. Well, the I'm... law of gravity works too. So, <laughs> so experiment with well, it. See how it's kind of like, yeah, exactly. Okay. So yeah. right. it works, right? So this is yeah. this is law of attraction. It it's out there. You can either use it or you can ignore it or you can laugh at it. But yeah, that's, and I love that you brought up complaining because that's an invitation that I'm constantly inviting people to do is to start eliminating that as a behavior from your life. Like just start, a, do it less today. <clears throat> complaining by definition is practicing having a problem with reality. How are you going to create with that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it just deactivates all forms of intelligence. So I love where you're, where you're going with this. Let's talk about the game for a second, because it's the game that we love. <clears throat> what would you say are a couple of, now I know you could go off on this forever. I know, but I got the legend on the line here. I got to ask her. What are a couple of the greatest life lessons from the game of golf? Oh my, what? Well, you know, you know. you learn you learn from your players. Mm. You, know, you learn you learn more from them than they're learning from you. Oh. But you got to put it to you. So, I'll never forget the aha moment for me was um Heather Farr, the late Heather, Heather Farr, and uh, one of the greatest uh, amateurs and professionals ever. And greatest people, and uh, it was big recruit for me. I was it was back in the eighties, and it was it was everybody said, "Can you recruit Heather Parr?" And I says, "Well, I'm certainly going to try to do that." So Heather comes onto the team, and uh, she just had this bubbly personality. She just radiated joy and happiness and all that. So people loved to follow her. So we're at this tournament in Texas. Now she's got a lot of people out there following her. She's a college player, she's not even a tour player yet, but people want to come out and, and watch her. So she's playing this great round. She's going to shoot in the 60s. And back then, not very many people, not very many females were shooting in the 60s, but she's going to shoot in the 60s. Knew she was going to have 67, 68, 69, something like that. And she comes into the 18th hole and she bogeys it. Hmm. She still shoots 68, but she bogeys the last hole. Now, she comes off the green and what everybody expected her to say was, oh my God, I wish I hadn't bogeyed the last hole or I'd have been better. She never talked. She comes off the 18th green and someone says, great round, Heather. And she goes, thank you. It was just a great day out there. Never, ever mentioned it. Didn't mention it. So I learned a lot from that. And from that, my team always knew we never talked about the bad shots. And I have this mantra that mm. there, there are no mistakes. They're only learning experiences. That is exactly the rest that's Gary Ridge's mantra. The guy I just mentioned from WD40 well, and the, to meet. I mean, that's like you're speaking the same. There's no mistakes. Right? They're only learning experience. And the rest of that, Chris, is what did you learn today? What can you do better tomorrow? Oh, now you see you just beat me to it. So what do you learn today and what can you do better tomorrow? So that's where I, I learned that from my players. And so when my players would come off the golf course, I didn't want to hear anything negative. And they... They weren't allowed to talk about it. Now, they probably needed to work on their putting or something. And I, But I'd say, what did you learn today? What can you do better? What do we need to work on? So we would have our team meetings in the evening. And we would always end our team meetings on your best shot. 
kind of like, you know, ESPN's top 10. And yeah. we'd always end the meeting on tell me your best shot because I wanted them to, you get very excited and uplifted and you get all those, those wonderful chemicals that we have in our system yeah. that are activated when you're talking about something really good or joyful or grateful. And so they would always, we'd always end our meeting with their best shot. And they'd go to bed happy and the oxytoxin would be flowing and all these good chemicals. And so those are the things that I learned. I'm not sure what your question was, something about what You're did not, you learn? <laughs> I'm not really not, sure. But, but I always like to use that as, as an example because my players learned learned that. And um, I can go on further with that if you want or keep yep. asking. Yeah. Okay. So I want to talk about the team bubble. Ooh. So because people said, you know, how, did, how do you build team chemistry? And they, they use the word now, what, what is your team culture? That's a big buzzword now. What's the team culture? Yeah. yeah. And so I called, but that back then I called it, what's our team bubble? And our team bubble was filled with positive thoughts, love, joy, gratefulness, thankfulness, being nice to each other, respecting each other. Mm. Those are all in the positive category. Now, in contrast, the negative comes to complaining, right, Chris? The complaining, complaining, fear, anger, guilt, shame. Those are all in the negative category. So I always talked about what category are we going to be in today, positive or negative? And you hear so many people now, oh, you want to stay positive. I don't think people don't understand really what that means. Yeah. Be positive. Oh, say only good things. Well, why? What's the why? It goes back to the vibrational energy because it raises the vibrational your vibrational energy and it gives you an opportunity to be your best as opposed to those that are in the negative category. So we had this team bubble and you have your own bubble. I have mine. If we were together, we you and I would create this incredible team bubble. But they all knew we had this team bubble. And sometimes I would say, who's going to get into the team bubble? And so I had to, sometimes I had to, I had to push the parents away. I don't know. Sometimes oh, I wouldn't that, allow the parents to be around it. It. just because, sure. you know, you know why. I know. So I would, I would create this positive team bubble. And then on two seconds, it can be gone by one parent saying, Oh God, it's too bad to hit in the water on number two. <laughs> I'm like, no, you don't want to say that to my players. Yeah. So it was this, so it's a team bubble. So that was, um, it was really how I built the team chemistry. And I had coaches, coaches today come up to me and they would say, we'd watch your team get out of the van. And they just had a different energy to them. They just had a different vibe to them. Uh -oh. It's like they were quietly confident. They weren't cocky. But, and that's what you do. Okay, so you brought it up. I was going to bring this up at the very end, but you, you're, you're beating me to the punch here left and right. I, I spoke, I visited with a few of our mutual friends in preparation for this. Okay. And one of them wanted me to ask you a question. And I'll tell you who it was in a second. The question was, please ask Coach V about the mixtape that they'd all listen to in the van on the way to the golf course. That's Kendall Critchfield. Oh, my God. Kendall. Yeah, he was one of the few people I let inside of my, our bubble. He was the only one when we would go to golf tournaments yeah. and he, his mom and uh, Kendall and his mom would always travel yeah. with us. Yeah. And uh, he was the only one that was allowed in my cart. The only one, because I loved his energy. We just, we had a vibrational match. So yeah, the, that's so funny because the team made this, um, this musical uh, cassette tape and it would, it was, you know, we are the champions, yeah. all those songs, motivational songs. And we would listen to that. And they made it uh, in the beginning of the season, and we'd listen to it every tournament, and it would always lead up to the national championship. And and uh, that was, yeah, that's, that's very that. interesting. Well, it put everybody in that good vibe. You know, I wanted to have yeah, a right. good vibe. Right music, using the right music to help you elevate your state, yeah. or as you say, manage your energy. So <clears throat> there's a tool that I use religiously in my coaching. And, you know, I don't, I have zero athlete clients at the moment. It's incredible how my career has, you know, mm -hmm. taken on new iterations and it's really amazing and fun. And you are with me every step of the way because one of the tools that I rely on religiously is called the post-game routine. Mm. 
and it's all yours. It's all, <laughs> it's all, and I give you credit all the time, and I like doing that because it, it's fun because it validates me because I because I, I, I know you. <laughs> yeah. I say it's from this is from the legend. I'm just passing it on. Okay. So it's after we and, and I'm using it still with leaders and with salespeople, you know, in, 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 in big business. It's like after, you know, a presentation. All right. What are you doing afterwards to make sure you're getting all the value out of it? This is all straight from you. So there's three questions. The first question is, how are you amazing? And don't bail on that. I don't care how rough it was, you go find the su success in error. And stay with it. And don't you dare say nothing. So it's because go get it. Go get the, the greatness. The greatness. How are you amazing? Now, how are you okay? Question number two, what is the big lesson for me? You taught me many, many moons ago. Every and this you, you, it was in the game of golf, but obviously easily, you know, applicable to everything in life. Every round of golf has a lesson in it for you. It's your job to go get it and grow from it. That's that stuck. That was one of those things, like a sentence or mm -hmm. two, that you hear, and for the rest of your life, it's etched, etched, and it has changed in my work. So that's question number two. What's the not ten one? The one thing. If you go back and you're going to do it over, you're going to do something differently, better, more love, less of, eliminate, include. That would make the biggest difference in the outcome. And then after you've identified that, obviously the third question is what specifically are you going to do then now to grow from it? So I would like to say thank you for that. Well, those are three beautiful, you, you phrased them in different words than I probably used, but it, that those are great ways to talk to people and uh, have them assess and get better. Again, it's all about getting better. What did you learn? What can you do better? Yeah. Who, who have been some of your greatest mentors? Well, that's an interesting question. Um, back when I first got started, I started coaching in 1980. That's a long time ago. And um, I didn't really, I was trying to find mentors. Mm. Um, but I had a hard time doing that. Um, so someone I looked at was Dale McNamara, the coach at Tulsa. And she kind of took me under her wings mm. and I watched her a little bit. But um, she was awesome. She was a great coach. She got a lot of her players, but I didn't really want to be like her. Um, she was a little tough on them. Okay. And I and I um I was a silent coach. And I would, oh, I would, sorry, I would have been this a silent coach. I never got in their faces. Oh, I see. Okay. Oh. I observe I observed. So I was an observer. Oh. And I would observe everything. How long did it take them to do this? I'd time them. I'd because I was looking for what was their state of mind and state of being when they were playing their best? Mm. How did it change when they, the wheels came off? So I observed all those things. And then we would have a discussion about that. I wouldn't basically say I'm timing you or whatever. I'd just say, hey, I notice when you play really well, you, you walk fast. And when you start playing, when you start walking slow, I think maybe you're thinking too much or something. So just I would observe observe all of those those different things and i don't remember what you asked me <laughs> uh who <laughs> who are some i wouldn't have, I would have my notes <laughs> <laughs> who, who have some of your greatest mentors been oh my mentors okay great okay so i got a little off track there so um I so you. i didn't really I have any back. but i gotta tell you i listened back then we had cassette tapes that's all we had cassette tapes so i listened to a lot of motivational tapes. Mm. And I listened to um, Wayne Dyer. Ah. Tice. I mean, Wayne Dyer was my most favorite, you know? And, and so I listened to those every single day, driving to work and coming home. So I listened to, so when you start listening to that, especially Wayne Dyer, you begin to, to build, you be able, you can create a philosophy off of the things that he's saying to you. Oh yeah. And so he was one of my mentors. Mm. And then I don't know if you remember Chuck Hogan. Of course I remember Chuck Hogan. So I had the fascinating lunch with Chuck Hogan over at the Raven. What a wild man he was. Yeah. He yeah. He was you talk about someone being ahead of their time. Yeah. He was way out there. Yeah. 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 But I learned a lot from him. And and by the way, Lynn Marriott bases all of her stuff on Chuck Hogan. I didn't know that. Yeah, they worked together. 
on me. And she studied under Chuck. Okay. Yeah. Nice. So he was one of my one of my mentors. But and she, far, he, by the way, let's just give him a shout out because they are just killing. Aren't they the best? They're amazing. They're amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. they Ian Nielsen and Lynn Marriott. If you're yeah, yeah interested, if you live in Arizona and you golf and you're looking for some instruction, you might want to check them out. Vision fifty four. Vision fifty four. What a great name! And if and if you if you don't know anything about the game of golf, fit the, the re, why is it called Vision Fifty Four? Well, if you birdied every hole yeah. on a par seventy two, you'd shoot fifty four. Yeah. It's getting closer and closer, Chris. It's getting closer, isn't it? Closer and closer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so um, it's hard for me to answer that question because I had to learn from other other, other people, and then uh, no, I love and, that. Um, is one of my I, biggest influences ever, ever. Yeah, yeah. My life. I mean, I could listen to his PBS shows all night long. Yes, yeah. You know, like inspiration and being in alignment with your spirit. When you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. I mean, you can yes. go on and on. He's just such yes. a, a beautiful. Uh, that's, that's so great. So, <clears throat> you know, um, another person that uh, has actually also been a uh, a guest here on Tough Talks. Uh, I, I contacted them in in preparation for our conversation today, and they gave me it. They sent a lot, but two things in particular that are uh, that are quotes, and I want to read them to you and see if you could guess who said these things. You, they said, bring and always have spirit, and they also said. There's this calm strength around her. Any guesses as to who might have said that? Uh, is that Debbie Cruz? Well, that's a good guess. That's a great guess because she was. Debbie Cruz um, was a former guest. It's not It's not Debbie. Mary B? Yes. Good job. <laughs> good job. Mary B. Well, you you want to look for those by... You want to look for those vibrational matches, and yeah. uh, and of course Mary B would understand that because she's of the same, you know, she's this. You could say the same thing about Mary B. Yeah. So yeah. I yeah, I, I give, special lady. Oh, yeah, to say the least, right? Yeah. And uh, how, spirit. Yeah. Right. And another ASU legend. Yes. Well, Coach, you're amazing. I I, I love and appreciate you so much. And I'm so proud of our uh, friendship, and I'm so thankful for our friendship and our history, and thankful for you and, and the vibe that you've just brought to my Tough Talks tribe, and all the wisdom bombs you just dropped. You have over delivered on, <laughs> uh, on your your commitment to share some some value with the people that that tune in to the podcast. So I am eternally grateful. I appreciate that. And I appreciate you very much. And thank you for spreading the word. Thanks, coach. Not so fast. <laughs> We're not done yet. There is something, at least one thing we forgot to, to I forgot, I forgot to ask about, which was the only undefeated team in NCAA history. As soon as I mentioned that you lit up, so we got to record this. So, so tell, tell us about that. Well, that was in 1995. It was a 1995 team. And uh, we were two-time national championships. We'd won the last two national championships. And this was the third year. And it was uh, pretty much the same group of kids. And uh, we started out winning every tournament in the fall. We won all the tournaments in the fall. And I had six players on the team kind of alternated back and forth who was going to put in put in the lineup but we go into the spring season and we're we're winning tournaments by 15 20 shots wow. it's unbelievable i mean it was unbelievable team it was windy ward heather Bowie, emily klein i'm sorry not emily she wasn't on the team there um kelly booth windy ward heather Bowie, kelly booth linda erickson and christelle morgadal and vinnie ribiello and we won everything and won by a bunch. And every every tournament, we also had the individual winner. So we had an individual winner, team winner. We go into conference play. We win conference. We go into regionals. Win regionals. 
Now we're going to nationals. Now, the good news is the media hadn't picked up on this. Oh, they, wow. weren't, uh, they weren't aware that we were undefeated. And so that was a good thing. Mm, because, right. No hype, I mean, no hype. What the, me what the media was, can they three-peat? Can this team win three championships in a row? No one's ever done it before. So that was the big news, can they three-peat? But no one picked up that we were undefeated. And so we go to the 1995 championship. We easily win. Chris Del Morgadal wins individually. Now, listen to this one. I put her in as my fifth player. I was her between her and Vinny, and I just thought I haven't gotten the most out of Chris Dell. I know there's more in her. So we put her in. And I said, Christelle, what do we need to do to really get you ready? I said, what do you do in Europe when you play so well over there? She's from France. She goes, oh, coach, I, we dance. We go out and we go dancing. And I go, seriously? She goes, yeah. And she goes, we don't drink. We just like to dance. The Europeans love to go out and dance. And I said, okay. So I told my assistant, who was Ashley Adelita, I said, Ashley, take Christelle out and dance her ass off. <laughs> Great. And so uh, I said, no drinking. Yeah, but just, yeah. She goes, okay. So they all go out dancing. So we go to a national championship and she's in this great mood and she ends up sitting in the front seat with me. Wendy Ward was always in that seat. Mm. Christelle wanted the front seat and Wendy says, okay, whatever she wants, I'm in the back. So I said, okay, let's just keep her in a good space. So yeah. we get there, she wins the NCAA championship, my number five, she wins the tournament. Now there's a lot more to that story. I mean, there was magic happening. It was all kinds of other things that went on. So not only do we win the team championship, we win the individual championship and we go undefeated. Now we thought it was a big deal and we kept thinking no one's gonna do this again. In 25 years, no one has done that since. That means we won every single tournament. No one has done it since. And I don't know that they will, especially with the format that we have now. So. When you mentioned that 1995, yeah. I do light up because that was that was a magical moment. That's where we were be prepared. And that was the, you know, we we had the music in the band. Everything was aligned and we just had to perform. Hey, Amen. I'm so glad I asked you about that. Thank you. For yeah. That. Yeah. That's just, uh, you know, I hope it was blatantly obvious how beautiful that relationship is to me, you know. I don't remember if I said this in, in the intro or not, but um, I think I did. We met, uh, you know, I don't know exactly when, but I know the it's either 1996 or 1997. You know, when I was doing my internship with the men's golf team, I don't know if I met her while I was doing my internship, because that was just one semester, just a few month period of time. But then I worked with the team for the next 10 years while she was there. And, um, you know, and, and obviously we grew really close and, Kindred spirits, so many wisdom bombs, and just how how good is her? I'm so happy that I wore this. That was, that was the obvious move, right? What should I wear <laughs> for my interview with uh, Coach Volstead? What a legend, huh? Absolute legend. All right. As always, thanks for tuning in, and until next time, create miracles.